back to engineer tomorrow's thermodynamic video series. This is video number 2 and today we will be focusing our discussion on thermodynamic processes and cycles. Throughout the presentation, we will first define a thermodynamic process and path. This will lead to a discussion of some of the assumptions used in thermodynamic analysis. Finally, we will conclude our presentation with a discussion of cycles and provide several examples of their application in real life. So without further ado, let's get started. A thermodynamic process is defined as an energetic change or transition from one state to another. Assume you have water initially at room temperature and pressure in a pan on a stove top. We will refer to this as state A. If you turn on the stove, you know from previous experience that the water's temperature will increase depending on the heat setting. For the sake of this discussion, you add enough heat to raise the temperature to 90 degrees Celsius. When the water reaches the desired temperature, it is considered to be at state B where the properties remain constant. The transition between state A and B is referred to as a process. The way in which your process occurs is referred to as the process path. For example, you could start with room temperature water and heat it up to 70 degrees Celsius first, then lower the temperature to 30 degrees, and finally raise it back to 90 degrees Celsius. The end result is still a process from state A to state B, but the way in which it is manifested differs by the process path. Without knowledge of the two states in between, the process path cannot be fully defined. Knowledge of an infinitesimally small number of states would be necessary in order to fully define the process path. In thermodynamics, the use of an infinite number of measurements to define a system is not feasible. For this reason, thermodynamic analysis of processes rely on the use of assumptions. Thermodynamic assumptions come in many different forms. Several examples include constant temperature or isothermal, constant pressure or isobaric, and constant density or isochoric. These are just a few of the many assumptions we often use in thermodynamics. The difficulty in conducting thermodynamic analysis typically lies in the determination of valid assumptions. One assumption that is often used in thermodynamic analysis is quasi-static or quasi-equilibrium. In a quasi-static process, it is assumed that the thermodynamic process occurs infinitely slowly in order to prevent unwanted effects such as friction, drag, or heat loss. This assumption is typically used to determine the most efficient manner in which a process can occur. While this assumption tends not to be realistic, it is instrumental in helping you to determine the maximum efficiency you can obtain with a thermodynamic process. While we won't be discussing how to determine the optimal efficiency in this video, it is important to know that this assumption is useful in identifying the limitations of a thermodynamic system. The last topic we will be discussing today is a cycle. Assume you begin at state A and undergo a series of thermodynamic processes that eventually lead you back to state A. This is what we call a thermodynamic cycle. While at first it may sound counterintuitive, there are many benefits to carrying out thermodynamic cycles. These benefits are often seen through the extraction of work or heat from a system. A car engine, for example, undergoes numerous thermodynamic cycles to make a shaft spin which produces forward motion. In a four-stroke engine, the cycle consists of four strokes or processes. These processes are intake, compression, ignition, and exhaust. Each process is instrumental in extracting energy from the internal combustion engine. Another example of a thermodynamic cycle is a heating or cooling system such as an air conditioning unit or heater. Using cycles, the units are capable of raising or lowering the temperature of a room. So in conclusion, it is important to understand these two fundamental concepts in order to perform thermodynamic analysis. They will continue to come up in our future conversations. Next time, we will begin to dive into the different types of energy which include potential, kinetic, and internal energy as well as work and heat. We have already discussed a few of them, but a more formal definition is required in order to understand future thermodynamic topics. We hope you enjoyed our video on thermodynamic processes and cycles. Please don't forget to comment like and subscribe, we will see you guys in the next video.